Hey guys, Zach King here with another Final Cut Pro tutorial. This is the first tutorial I'm doing on uh, green screening, chroma key as some people call it. I'm going to play the clip right now and show you what I did. Basically have a girl in a park. Uh, looks like she's waiting for somebody. Maybe looking for somebody, okay. That's the clip. And now my favorite part, I'm going to show you the original. And there, it's just in front of a green screen. There you go. So that was the original, and this is the final. I think the final turned out pretty good. A couple things about this uh, Chroma King. First of all, let me just say that it comes down to two things in production, lighting and making sure the lighting is actually well done. Here, let me go to here. Let me show you my setup a little bit. I think if I have it in the footage, a wide shot. Here we go. Um, you see I have a, a green screen set up in the background. I have two lights on this side and two lights on the other side. Uh, the two on either side closest to the green screen are just lighting the screen, and the other two on both sides are lighting her. And I do have other lights. I, I just was a little lazy, but I should have done more. Um, but this, this it comes down to lighting on the set. Make sure the lighting is well done. If you want to do a tracking shot with green screen, with um, the camera moving, we can go over another tutorial that requires a couple other techniques. I think you can do it better in motion. It's a lot easier to keyframe background, but let's just go over the basics of keyframing right now. So let's start off with, um, I have my clips here, and uh, if I just drug them into the timeline, it would look like this, these three shots. And if I go to my effects, I'm going to drag a chroma key copy, which isn't my favorites, but if you come down to uh, to video filters, key, chroma key here, you can drag that on three times. If you don't want to drag it on three times, which I don't want to do, I could have highlighted them, effects, video filters, key, chroma key here, I could have selected that and it would have dropped on all of my selected clips, so do that. Um, Let's see here. Drag these up, select them all, take them to the second video track because the first track is going to have your photo underneath or video. Video. Um, I just did a photo for this, this example, but yeah, you could do a video, you could do whatever. Just make sure for this shot, I didn't move the camera on her, so I shouldn't have the camera moving in the background. Um, I'm going to come to my footage and grab my photo of Central Park. I'm going to drag that under. You don't have to drag this under now. I just like to a lot of times. Some, I will uh, show you also how to turn it off while you're keying as well. But I have our photo. You can't see it because it's behind her. But let's go ahead and key this out now. We've got our, I'm going to select the first clip. We've got our key, our chroma key here. And this is the basic setup how it always is. The luma is unchecked, usually the saturation is there, and then the color, color bar. And you have these other tools which we'll talk about. So this little eyedropper tool, which you can see right here, is the select color button, but it's the eyedropper. And that will select which um, color we want to key out. So you could have done a blue screen, you could have done another color. I think blue and green are the most common colors. The basic difference is, if I was filming a blonde, I would want to do a blue just because it keys out better. The green often, as you can see over here in the color bar, the green is closest to the yellow. So her hair, if I was doing a blonde, would tend to key out quicker and it would kind of not work as well but and uh, that's the basic reason green is usually for outdoors and so let's select the eyedropper and select green just a mid color green right there and you can see as I did that most of the color keyed out if you have a good lighting on your screen it'll do that and what you want to do again is also keep selecting this eyedropper tool but also hold down shift at the same time now and click in another green spot. I'm going to keep clicking, click around. I see a little green here. I see a little green over here. There. That's as far as I want to go. You can still see I have green around her upper body, her shoulders, and her hair a little bit. But we're going to worry about that later. So you just want to get the general. You see also in her phone. We'll get that. That's not a big deal. You also notice the photo is not quite covering the whole screen. That's a last detail that I cover at the end. I don't worry about it now. Um, okay, now this is when we use our saturation, our luma, and our color bar as well. 
you can uh, in, if you're keying. Sometimes when you use the eyedropper, it won't get it won't work every time because your color, for some reason, isn't lit well enough, or it's too dark, or sometimes it's too overlit. So you want to come to your color bar and you can open that out. Now you, you see when I did that. Here, let me show you again. I'll move it back. Here, you see a lot of green, and when I open it, it really does good and cuts in. But I don't want to go all the way because I'm going to come down to this softening tool later and soften it all out. And you can see that pixelation around her body goes away, makes it a little smoother, blends in.